All right, so we have students entering into the room. Welcome, welcome to the students joining us. I'm gonna go over a couple things um, for our students joining us for our Marin Virtual College Fair. Students, uh, if you do have any questions throughout the presentation, uh, it doesn't have to just be when that uh, pre uh, institution is presenting, but at any point in time, feel free to use that Q&A box uh, that's at the bottom uh, of your screen. Uh, just so you know, your camera and microphone are off so our presenters can't hear or see you. Uh, students also want to let you know that there are many more sessions available, so feel free to sign up for future sessions and to check the offerings that we have. And also this recording will be available later on this same website that you used to register for this session. Uh, so we are going to jump right in. Uh, and I'm going to pass it off to our presenter here from Arizona State University. Perfect. Let me get my screen shared here. Cool. Thank you all for joining us tonight. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, my name is Andrew LaFrance, and I work for Arizona State University as their Northern California Admission Coordinator. Um, so just going to kind of go through some interesting facts about ASU for you all. So I always like to talk about our charter. Um, everything we do at ASU is based off of inclusion, access, um, and success for students. Um, so we do um, provide a lot of resources for our students. We are able to admit about 80% of our applicants um, thanks to our assured admissions process. Um, and we really wanna support our students, make sure that they are um, comfortable on campus, you know, have the support that they need and can get through within four years. Um, so we are located down in the Phoenix metropolitan area. We have four campuses, um, all connected by a shuttle system, but each campus is fully sustainable. So students do have one campus that they're a part of during their four years at ASU. We are located in the fifth largest city in the US. So tons of opportunities for students off campus, you know, in terms of internships, job placement, and working part-time while they're in school. Um, so a lot of our students end up sticking around the Phoenix region after graduation. Um, there's also a lot to do outside because the weather is so nice year round. Um, right now through April, really beautiful 70, 80 and 90 degree days, obviously very hot in the summer, but a lot of students do return home or um, decide to do an indoor internship or job during the summer. Um, so just a little bit about each of our campuses real quick, depending on the program that you apply to that de determines which campus you end up at. Um, so Tempe is our original campus and the largest campus, um, one of the largest in the country. Um, with about 52,000 students right now. So Tempe is home to our School of Business, Engineering, our Fine Arts Institute, um, School of Sustainability, and Liberal Arts and Sciences, as well as our Teachers College. So huge variety of programs at Tempe, as well as our Division I Athletics. We are part of the Pac-12 Networks. The school spirit is really big year-round, and students do get free admission to all of the athletic events um, that they'd like to go to. Um, Downtown Phoenix offers our journalism program, which is currently ranked in the top 10 in the nation. We also have a direct entry nursing program, which is great for students that want to get that nursing degree right in four years, um, as well as a lot of public service and public policy type programs for those students interested in nonprofit or government type work. Um, the Polytechnic campus offers all of our aviation programs, um, as, um, including professional flight, so we do have the option of becoming a pilot. Um, Polytechnic also has some great hands-on engineering programs for students. Um, last but not least is the West Campus. Um, it is the smallest with about 4,500 students, but it's really great for students that want to be a little bit bigger fish on a, in a smaller pond and really get that um, closely knit community right off the bat. So as I said, the degree that you do apply to determines which campus you end up at. They are all ASU. One really great thing we've designed for every one of our 350 bachelor's degree programs is the major map. Um, and this just shows a screenshot of one major map for sustainability, Bachelor of Science. And we've created these so that you can see as a prospective student or a current student, all the classes that you would take as a part of your four-year program. So even before you apply to ASU, you can see all of these programs and um, find, or all of the classes you would take and see if it might be a good fit for you. Community is really big at ASU. Um, going back to our charter, you know, student success and inclusion is really a big part of what we do. Um, so we wanna make sure that every student finds their community at ASU. And because we are such a large campus, we're able to provide community for all different types of students. 
So um, no matter what you're interested in, no matter how you identify or your background, uh, religious beliefs, we have all of these different types of people at ASU. Um, so you're going to be able to meet people um, and learn and grow alongside them for four years. We do have over actually 1,200 clubs and organizations, so a lot to get involved with right off the bat. Um, we have about 70 chapters of Greek life, a lot of intramural options, you know, professional organizations, religious and political organizations. Um, so a lot of ways to get involved um, with students from all over the country and all over the world. Go over our admission requirements real quick. And again, going back to our charter, our assured admission requirements um, state that as long as you meet the requirements for a program, you can gain admission into that program. Um, so we do look for students to complete those classes there on the left-hand side. And most of our programs actually just require a 3.0 GPA based off of those classes that is unweighted and will admit you into most of our programs. We are and always have been test optional. So you do not have to have an SAT or ACT score to be admitted to ASU. However, if you don't meet that GPA um, requirement there, you can also gain admission through your SAT, ACT, or um, if you're in the top 25% of your high school graduating class. So a few different ways to gain admission, but again, very simplistic. No essay, no letters of recommendation or anything like that needed. Cost of attendance is always important to consider no matter what school you're going to. So I did wanna point out that our out-of-state tuition is 28,800 per year, along with the other associated fees. Um, students do live on campus for at least one year. So the housing and meal plan is uh, definitely a part of that first year cost. And then students have the option to move off campus. We do offer merit scholarships to help bring down the cost for students. Um, our out-of-state um, scholarships for um, students coming to Arizona are between $7,000 and $15,000 per year, and they are four-year scholarships. So this is definitely a great way, if you're awarded one of these, to help bring down that cost um, for all four years. And we do award these to over half of our admitted students. Finally, just because it's brief tonight, I wanted to point out our visit website. Although all of our visits are virtual at this time, we do have some specific visits that students can learn more about the honors college, you know, individual academic colleges and um, speak with current students as well. So definitely a great option. And real quick, if you can take a picture or email, uh, remember my email for later, more than happy to talk to you again in the future. So thank you. Excellent, and we will now pass it off to our representative from Eastern Oregon. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Alison. I'm the Regional Admissions Counselor for Eastern Oregon University, and I'm just going to get my screen share ready. Oops, sorry, I think I have there a red tint. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so right off the bat, uh, we're just going to do a quick 20-second um, campus tour. Uh, so in Low Hall, uh, this is probably the place where most students will go for admissions, financial aid. Um, it's a pretty small campus, so it's you know fairly easy to go through all the way across the two furthest points, or maybe if you're a slow stroller like I am, probably like five minutes from Badgley Hall uh, for the sciences to the um, residence halls. Um, I'm originally from a small town called Los Angeles, California, and I went to Eastern Oregon University myself um, to study psychology and health studies. And one of the things that really drew me in was just looking at how all of the students in my area and year were really looking at the same schools and I wanted a different experience. And so I found Eastern Online um, and it really was a good fit. So I hopefully I can kind of show a little bit of that to you in this quick six minutes presentation. Um, so Eastern Oregon University, we're located in La Grande, Oregon. So uh, coming in from Portland, we're about four hours away. From Tri-Cities, Washington, we're about two hours. And then from Boise, about two and a half hours. Um, so not too, too far from the big cities. Uh, the town of La Grande itself, we have about 13,000 people. So we are a smaller town, but we are the largest in the county. Um, so there's a lot of you know, opportunities that come with that. You know your neighbors very well. That was the first thing that I noticed when I you know, moved up from LA, Pasadena, was just how well everyone around you knows each other and kind of that sense of community is built in you know, from day one. Uh, so there's lots to do outside in Eastern Oregon. So if you like the you know, outdoor recreation areas, uh, Mount Emily Rec Center is about mm, two miles away from campus, so maybe 10 minutes. Um, there's tons of different trails for students to get involved with. There's 80 miles of motorized and non-motorized trails for ATV, motocross, um, mountain biking or hiking. Uh, let's see, Wallawa Lake is about an hour and a half east of campus. So anything with parasailing, hang gliding, water sports, 
Um, Stand-up paddleboarding, swimming, kayaking, canoeing, all of that's included. There's over 1,500 acres um, of just space out there. So you really get some opportunities for activities. Anthony Lakes, one of the top ski and snowboard resorts in the Pacific Northwest. Um, so anything with skiing, snowboarding, um, cross-country skiing, anything along those lines, it's a great place. They also have spring and winter activities, or sorry, spring and summer, but mostly known for their winter activities. It's, and then finally, my personal favorite is Morgan Lake. It's about two minutes from campus as well. It's a very quiet, tranquil, docile place to be. Um, there's no motors or engines allowed on the water, so you just go and there's, you know, stand-up paddleboarding, hiking, camping, all of that, and it's totally free for students to get involved with. So about Eastern specifically, we have about 1,500 students on campus, so we're sized kind of similar to a small private school, but we are, once again, a four-year public institution, so open to pretty much everyone applying. Um, so with that, you get a lot of benefits. Um, our average class size is less than 25 students. Our smallest class is two students. And like when I was a student taking uh, statistics, our class was only four. So I never liked statistics, I never will. But having that relationship with my professor really helped kind of get me into the program and get everything kind of hammered out and being able to access them. We don't have any uh, student teachers or student assistants. Every class is taught by an actual professor. Um, this is just a couple of our popular programs, maybe about a quarter of them. Um, our pre-med program, about 96% of students go into med school the first time that they apply. Pre-law is about 95. All of our pre-professional uh, programs have above a 90% placement. Uh, education has 100% for all of our teachers, so they either find a job before they graduate or right after graduation. Um, lots of different things to choose from. Um, and then one of the cool things about being a liberal arts university is you can really mix and match your degree. So even though I studied psychology as my main bachelor focus, I still took classes in music production, welding, computer science, uh, theater arts, and all of that kind of melded together. We're never gonna tell you that you can't take a certain class because of your major. So we really welcome you to take as many classes as you like. Studying abroad, that's a really popular program for students as well. Um, just a quick bit, you will never find a less expensive time in your life to travel the world than when you're in college. There's scholarships available for students to study abroad, so highly recommend checking that out. Uh, with student support services, there's a lot to unpack here. It could be its own presentation, but long story short, anything we can do to make you a better student is never going to be at cost to you. So free tutoring, um, if you need to talk to a counselor, you're not going to get charged for that. You just go in with drop-in hours, or if you want to set up an appointment with your one-on-one -on -one counselor, we're here for you. Lots of different activities to you know get involved with theater, the ROTC program, art, our one up game club, they compete nationally for video game scholarships and esports. So lots of different things. Outdoors, we have the only accredited trap shooting club in the state. So they also get scholarships. But yeah, tons of different things to choose from. One of my favorite activities was the outdoor adventure program. So hiking, skiing, snowboarding, kayaking, canoeing, rock climbing, swimming, camping, all that's free for students. And then you also get college credit for some of those classes as well if you want to use that towards your degree. Uh, for athletics, we are in the NAIA, so we're about the size of a D2, but the majority of our scholarships go directly to students in the form of scholarships. Um, so this is kind of a list of the sports that we offer. Check out uesports.com, and they will get you some more information, uh, more direct contact info for the coaches. Uh, you are required to live on campus for your first year, but we have a lot of accommodations set for students. So your Wi-Fi, your heating, your air conditioning, cable, all of that's included. And it's more of a suite style than a dorm. So it's, you know, you have an option of living by yourself, living with a roommate or living with two roommates. And this room and board cost covers your entire uh, three terms. And then for the WUI, um, tuition is reduced for the California residents. So you automatically get WUI tuition. There's no application or anything required. And it's pretty straightforward. We're one of the most affordable options in the Pacific Northwest. Um, incoming freshmen GPAs average around 3.3, 3.4. And the application is fairly straightforward. You apply online, $50 fee, which you can defer, send your official transcripts and you're set to go. Scholarships, and sorry, I'm running out of time. Highly recommend visiting campus. And then social media, take a screenshot of this. It's like a digital business card and I am more than happy to connect with you in the future. Thanks for listening. Excellent. We will now head on to our representative from the University of California, Irvine. Hello everyone, good evening. My name is Victor Sanchez. I am a senior undergraduate admissions counselor at our beautiful and wonderful university, the University of California, Irvine. I am about to share my screen. If you cannot see my screen, please let me know. Uh, perfect, so first and foremost, and, and to share with you, this is our Discover UCI Online Week. 
So if you put your phones on the QR code, you can register, you can still register for events uh, this week. I, and so we're gonna have quite a few of our academic schools, School of Engineering, School of Business, School of Nursing, School of Biology, uh, and they will be doing different sessions and presentations for students. So if you're definitely interested uh, in UCI or you wanna know more, uh, please join us this week. So a few things to share uh, with you about our university. Uh, we are in the top five more supply to universities in the United States. Uh, in California, uh, more and more students are applying to UCI. And in fact, for the last two consecutive years, more California high school students have applied to UCI, more so than any other UC. One third of all Fortune 500 companies are located right in our city of Irvine. I, and we are only 10 minutes from the beach. So if you want to go to the beach, with one of our student clubs or organizations and do a bonfire in the evening. So you want to go swimming or surfing. Again, we're only 10 minutes away. Uh, the Newport Beach Back Bay is only five to seven minutes away. So if you like to go running or, or paddle boarding or kayaking or ride your bike, that's only five to seven minutes from campus. We are the top 10 public university. And in fact, we are, we are in the top 10. In fact, we are the number eighth public university in the US, according to US News and World Report. Uh, Money Magazine has its number one for best value uh, from public universities. And the other one I will share with you is that according to uh, the New York Times, uh, we are down for the American, we're doing the most for the American dream for our students. And that's according to the New York Times. A couple of things about our enrollment. We are what you call a mid-sized university. So we're, we have about 36,000 students. But if you walk around campus and if you talk to our students, they'll share with you that it feels more like a smaller type of university. And there are two reasons for that. One is that our faculty to student ratio is only 18 to one. And two, and as you can see this map behind me and I'll share with you, is that we have a very circular open, <clears throat> excuse me, a circular and open and unique layout of our university. So it's actually kind of hard to get lost at UCI. So as you walk around our campus, students feel like it's a smaller type of university setting. Our one year retention rate is 93%, our four year graduation rate 68%, and the national statistical average for public institutions for six years is 60%. Ours is 83%, uh, and part of that is due to our amazing faculty, our amazing staff. We are huge on academic advising. We have uh, academic advisors at each of our single uh, 14 uh, academic schools, uh, and we want to make sure that we provide all the tools and resources for our students to succeed while they are pursuing their academic journey at UCI. So we have beautiful sun, sun, sunny days in California. Uh, specifically in Orange County, which is where we are based. So approximately 280 days a year. Uh, something that you may not know uh, about the beautiful uh, uh, city of Irvine is that for the last 14 consecutive years, the FBI has the city of Irvine as America's most safest city in America for populations that have, for cities that have a population of 250,000 or more. Uh, and also this is in the major crime category. So it's important for our students and our families to know that not only is UCI a very open and inviting uh, you know, university, but also the city where we are based is also definitely very safe and secure. Again, we're based in Orange County. So the beaches are only 10 minutes from campus. Students go there for bonfires, they go there for concerts, or they drive up for 23 minutes uh, to go to Disneyland. Disneyland is only 23 minutes from our campus. So this is where we are based, and that's the beautiful Pacific Ocean. Uh, and here is the map of our campus. In the center of UCI is a 21-acre Aldrich Park. In New York City, they, they have Central Park. We have Aldrich Park on campus. And it looks small, but it's really 21 acres. And our students have all the events here throughout the year. Uh, and as you go outside the smaller circle, you'll see a much bigger circle. That is called the Outer Ring Road. At our campus, if you are in our bookstore, and if you head out a straight out for 15 or 18 feet, regardless whether you go right or left, after walking for one mile, you end up walking exactly where you started. So it's very unique, this open circular layout uh, is nowhere at any other college or university in the Western states or in the Midwestern states. There's one small private school 
uh, in the East Coast, but this is a very unique and open layout. These are all our academic units here. So as you walk around the, the uh, outer ring road, you'll see the many different units. The School of Nursing is a bit to the right. Our amazing School of Medicine is a bit uh, behind the buildings uh, on the upper right-hand corner. But other than that, these are all our, our other academic uh, units. Uh, and they all have excellent academic advisors. We have 85 majors, 70 minors, and 65 masters and PhD programs. So these are our 14 academic schools. They are all unique and excellent in their own way. For example, a, a Claire Trevor School of the Arts actually competes for students uh, for as far as with Juilliard for students that want to go into dance or music. If you're a computer science major or engineer major, you probably know that Donald Brin School of Information and Computer Science and Henry Summerlin School of Engineering are top schools uh, in the West Coast. Palmer School of Business has a 32nd best uh, undergraduate business administration program in the country. And so all of these schools are very unique uh, in their own way. And again, uh, we are huge on academic advising. We are what we call an all-inclusive university, and we're a minority type institution as well. So these are some of the student resources. Uh, and these are some of our first-gen initiatives. Uh, I will share with you that some of our faculty and some of our staff do volunteer to be mentors to mentor some of our first-gen students. We are a top 10 public research university, so we're huge on research. And in fact, 73% of our students participate in undergraduate research before they graduate. They also uh, take part in a consortium where you present your research to your fellow and eaters on campus. And then that experience gets to go on your resume. And hopefully that will be good for internship opportunities, as well as hopefully job employment opportunities when you graduate from UCI. We have a top study. Time, time to wrap up, Victor. We have a top study abroad program, so definitely encourage you to visit us. We hold three Guinness World of Records. We like to have fun on campus. We have many different student clubs and organizations. So please definitely visit us. We are an NCAA Division I school. Here's the, our, feel free to take a picture of this, please. And here are the requirements for students. We do not look at SAT or CTs for our comprehensive review for selection of admissions nor for scholarships. So I wanted to share that with you. And then this is a comprehensive review process. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. Thank you. We will now turn it over to our representative from William Jessup University. Uh, hi guys, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Landon Schaefer and I'm one of our admissions counselors here at William Jessup University. Uh, we've prepared a five minute video to show you guys. So my friend Aurora is gonna share with you about who we are as Jessup as a private small Christian university and what sets us apart. So if you guys, I'm gonna share my screen and I hope you guys can hear everything well. All right. Hi, my name is Aurora and I'm with William Jessup University and I'm here to tell you a little bit about what makes Jessup distinctive. We are a community that provides opportunity for our students in an affordable way. A little bit about the community is that we're very family oriented. In fact, we have a 12 to 1 student to faculty ratio, which means that your professors are accessible to you. Many of our students have made lifelong friends from their time at Jessup, and that's done through a lot of student life activities like therapy dogs during finals week. We also have a tradition called late night breakfast where your faculty and your staff, and even the president of the university comes and makes you pancakes during finals week because finals are difficult. We also have fun activities like dodgeball games and air band competitions throughout the year. So other than our student life activities, we also have a lot of students who are involved in athletics. Did you know that our baseball won the GSAC conference and that one of our students got drafted into the Dodgers? Other than baseball, we have basketball, soccer, cross country and track, volleyball, softball, tennis, and golf, as well as many intramural sports for our students to get involved in too. One of the things that makes our campus wonderful is our food. <laughs> We're actually 14th best in California. And because Sacramento is the farm to fork capital of the nation, we're trying to follow suit with organic and locally grown options as well as gluten and dairy free. So other than our on-campus activities, we're also trying to get students to engage in the local community. One is through local and global outreach. Did you know that 10% of our student population was overseas this summer serving in missions? We also partner with many local ministries so our students are getting 
outside of the Jessup bubble. Which brings me to the many opportunities that Jessup provides. We are actually one of the only private Christian WASC accredited universities in the greater Sacramento area and one of the few in Northern California. And Sacramento is the 25th fastest growing job market in the United States, which means that our students are getting internships and jobs. 94% of our students are going to grad school or employed upon graduation, and some of our majors, 100% of them are in a full-time position upon graduation. The way that we do that is through our 12 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Imagine a professor with a doctorate degree knowing your name and the kind of networking opportunities that come from that. In addition to that, we have a career center that is resourcing our students and showing them the path to their chosen career fields. So what you've all been waiting for, affordability. Did you know that our students graduate with 30% less debt than the national average? 30%. In fact, US News and World Report has ranked us as one of the best value colleges in our region, number one in California. And the way that we do that is through giving 99% of our students some sort of financial aid. That's over 12 million in scholarships that are going out to Jessup students. And that could be you. So if I piqued your interest at all, keep watching. We're gonna show you about some of our academic offerings at Jessup. This is who we are. We aren't afraid to get our hands dirty, learning and experiencing as we go in the field or the lab. We aren't waiting around for someone to show us the way. We are actively shaping the future. We're not doing this alone either. We're focused on those around us and making an impact here and afar. Created to shift perspective, to tell a story, building an atmosphere of expression. Our vision for tomorrow is brighter it's better, and it includes us all. We are putting in the work to make it a reality. And it's not just about what we can do, but how we do it and why we do it that way. Pushing to the front of the pack, leading the way, and staying Christ-centered in the center of it all. This is who we are. Welcome to Jessup. Hi, my name is John Jackson, and I'm the president of William Jessup University. And I know that you're looking at colleges right now, and it is a stressful time. But uh, I'd love to have you come to Jessup. Uh, we've got amazing classes. We've got great uh, community experience here. Lots of great connections, wonderful things to do. Our professors are the best and our food is amazing. But you know what? The best thing that you could do, you can apply to Jessup. You can come visit Jessup. We would love to see you here. So that was a taste of Jessup, but don't just take our word for it. Come and see and experience it for yourself. Schedule a visit by going to jessup.edu slash visit. And if you want personalized information on transferability or financial aid information, submit an application. It takes about 10 minutes and it's $45. Just go to jessup.edu slash become a warrior. So all of that to say, I hope that you come and experience Jessup for yourself. Thanks for listening. Well, all right, guys, thank you so much for uh, following along. And if anything in that video resonated with you, anything about a private Christian university and what we can offer, I'm going to go ahead and drop some links in the chat bar here, and hopefully we can get connected. And by the way, that $45 fee is waived for fall, so it takes about 15 minutes to apply, and we can get you talking to an admissions counselor. Thank you. All right, and we are now moving on to the University of Tulsa. Thank you, Kara. Good evening, everybody. My name is Katie Reed, and I'm the Director of Regional Admission at the University of Tulsa. We are a small, private, four-year institution located in the heart of Tulsa, Oklahoma. So right here, you can see our beautiful campus. It is a very traditional, very green, self-contained um, college campus. It sits just three miles from downtown Tulsa. So you have all the fun uh, student activities happening on your campus, but then you have really easy access to all the fun things happening in a nice mid-size city. So the city of Tulsa is the second largest city in the state of Oklahoma. It's the only city in the state that has its own ballet, symphony, opera, and orchestra. Um, so there's a thriving music and art scene in Tulsa, lots of museums, art galleries, tons of live music that comes through Tulsa, lots of um, festivals that happen year round, and a lot to do outside as well. We have over 100 parks in the city, and we have over 50 miles of hike and bike trails along the Arkansas River. 
So our students um, enjoy a lot of fun activities off campus, but on campus, we have about 4,400 students total. Of that student population, about 3,300 are our undergrads. So there is a very strong focus on undergrads at Tulsa. We also have a grad school, um, a law school, and then we have a number of PhDs that we offer as well. But as a freshman through senior year, you have access to all um, of these wonderful opportunities on campus. You're not having to wait until you're you know, a grad student or pursuing a PhD to get undergraduate research opportunities or do anything else for that matter on campus. We do have a very diverse student body coming from all over the United States and a fairly large international population as well. It's about 15% of our student body. We do have small classes, average class size is 21. It's 11 to one student to faculty ratio. So you are getting the small classes. You're getting that attention from your professors. Um, your professors are gonna know you by name. You're never gonna be in a big lecture hall with over 200 students. It just doesn't happen at TU. It's smaller, more intimate learning environments. And while you do have the small classes, you also have the excitement of D1 sports events. So we are actually one of the smallest NCAA Division I football schools in the nation. So you have the big football games and basketball games and volleyball games. You're not giving up the excitement of those athletic events to have the small classes. We also have over 200 student clubs and organizations. Whatever it is that you're wanting to get involved in on campus, we probably have it. Um, we're not a religiously affiliated school, but we do have 18 campus ministries. We are a very welcoming campus for students of all different backgrounds and beliefs. And we do have Greek life on campus as well, if that's something that you're interested in. As far as academics are concerned, we have four different undergraduate colleges at TU. When you apply for admission, you're just applying for general admission. And then you tell us what you'd like to study as an incoming freshman or you can come in undecided. There's also a lot of flexibility to kind of take an interdisciplinary approach to your studies at Tulsa. So you're never locked into one department or even one of these four colleges that's listed here. You can double major across colleges. You can do a major and a couple of minors if you'd like. So there's a lot of freedom for you to kind of explore different areas of study. Um, and you can know that coming into Tulsa that you have all of that flexibility. So it kind of relieves a lot of that pressure as an 18 year old incoming freshman. As I mentioned before, we do have undergraduate research opportunities for students from every major on campus starting freshman year. So you are getting that hands-on experience doing research projects alongside your professors, or you can come up with your own research proposals and get funding for that from the University of Tulsa. Many of these students will present their research at conferences here in the States as well as internationally. Um, and a lot of these students will be published by the time they graduate as well. So we do have a, a wide variety of majors, everything from creative writing to psychology, lots of business options, the engineering and natural sciences college, and then health sciences, but we're most known for our STEM program. So I did wanna focus on the STEM options a little bit. Here you can see a number of engineering options that we have. Um, mechanical engineering is our largest department on campus. Computer science is second and petroleum engineering is third. So for all of our students at Tulsa, we have a 97% job placement rate within six months of graduation. But for many of these STEM options, it's actually 100%. So for chemical or mechanical engineering, sorry, it's 100%. Um, computer science, 100%. Our nursing students, 100% of our nursing students pass the NCLEX um, first try. Um, and they also have 100% job placement rate. We are also very known in the world of cybersecurity. We have the largest cyber core program in the nation, and we are um, one of three NSA centers of excellence in the country as well. So if you are wanting to go into cybersecurity, cyber defense, about 75% of those cyber core students are employed by the CIA, NSA, Department of Defense, and NASA once they graduate. So we have a very robust um, student success program on campus where you are actually assigned to a student success coach uh, once you enroll as an incoming freshman, months before you even step foot on campus. And that student success coach will really be like your go-to person on campus for everything that you need over the course of your undergraduate career at Tulsa. So you'll have your academic advisor who's meeting with you about course placement and putting you in the proper classes for whatever academic path it is that you're pursuing. But your student success coach is there free for everything else. So to make sure that you are aware of all the resources that exist to you on campus, make sure that you're never slipping through the cracks, you know, um, you know which offices on campus can help you with what. 
And here we have a number of companies and organizations that our University of Tulsa students do full-time uh, paid internships with, and then also get full-time employment later on. We are on the common application. It is free to apply. We are test optional. We will automatically consider you for a merit-based scholarship when you apply. Uh, we also have need-based funding that will award to you on top of your merit-based scholarship. Please put down my email address and phone number. I will be your admissions counselor and reach out if you have any questions about the University of Tulsa. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Excellent. Thanks so much. So students, uh, we do have just a little bit of time remaining in this session, uh, just because we had uh, one institution, unfortunately, not join us. Um, so we do have just about a minute, maybe a uh, minute and 15 seconds per institution. If there is just a final thought or something you now have thought of, you want to make sure to share with our students, um, or maybe a special tradition or something that's very unique. Um, about your campus. Uh, we'll go in that same order again, and we'll just um, wrap up with about a minute or so um, for each of our schools. So we'll go ahead and start with Arizona State. Cool, thank you. Um, I guess just one thing I like to point out about ESU is it is sort of a choose your own adventure type school. Um, so because we are so large, you can go through and kind of make it your own and choose what aspects you wanna take advantage of or maybe which things may not be for you. Um, so that's just one feature I like about ASU. Excellent, how about Eastern Oregon? Um, so one thing I did forget to mention is that we have been test optional. Um, so your SAT, AC, SAT, ACT, those scores are not needed. And then we just really wanna reiterate that, you know, in the light of COVID. Um, so a lot of students haven't had that opportunity. Um, so don't worry about that if you haven't taken them. If you have, um, we can use those for scholarships, but if not, they can't be used against you. Um, and yeah, I guess the best tip that I had when I was in high school looking at all the colleges, visit the colleges if you can, talk to the counselors, talk to your professors, um, talk to students, see how they like it, and then get to know us, your admissions counselors, get our emails. We are here for you. Without you, we don't have a job. So send us emails, all those questions that you're really not sure how to ask, Send them to your admissions counselors. We're here for you. And University of California, Irvine. Thank you. You know, we have uh, 85 uh, bachelor degree programs, 70 minors. And when we talk to students all the time, students are always asking about different questions about our different majors. And all our majors are excellent. But often I will ask the student, you know, where do you want to be in seven to eight or 10 years from now? What career path? Because often several majors can take a student on the same career path. Now, obviously for School of Nursing, that's very specific. Computer science, we have an excellent computer science program as well. We have several uh, engineering uh, bachelor degree programs and these are all excellent as well as our medical school uh, and our law school, our campus. So I definitely want to encourage students to research the different majors at the different colleges and universities find out what career path you want to be in, and then eventually find out if, if more than one major can possibly take you there. And if not, definitely stay with your major. Uh, and on behalf of all of us at UCI undergraduate admissions, our very best to you as you move forward with your academic journey, as you're transitioning from high school down to your college journey. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kara. Yeah. Um, That's it. Everybody else had some really good things to say. I would just say this, guys. Uh, COVID has, it's put a bump in everybody's road. I apologize. Somebody's trying to call me on this work phone. Um, but like I was saying, <laughs> sorry. That's all right. We have just a couple, we're okay. It's all right. It ended. There's no way to get out of that. Okay. Um, what I would say to you guys is COVID seems like it's just taking over everything, but rest assured, eventually you're going to get to college. Okay. Eventually you're going to get into that place that you've been working so hard all throughout high school to get to. Um, and as admissions counselors, we find joy in the fact that students get to come and experience 
experienced those things. Um, about Jessup, I was a student at Jessup. I graduated. That's where I met my wife, and that's where my brother currently goes. My wife and I both work at Jessup, so we love Jessup, and it's for this one reason, because Jessup is not just a school you're going to come to get your degree. It's a school that you're going to come to, and you're going to grow as, a, as an individual, as a person. So we really take a holistic approach at education and growing people both just not just educationally, but physically and emotionally and spiritually. Those are things that we pride ourselves in. And I'd ask you to ask yourself this question when you're looking into colleges. What are you looking for out of college? All right, guys, thank you so much for your time. Excellent. And University of Tulsa. Yeah, I'll kind of add to what Landon just said. Um, I would encourage the students here to just really think about um, the, the kind of environment that they're looking for on their college campus and what's going to be the best fit for them generally, kind of beyond um, a specific major um, and academics, because there's so many great schools out there where you're going to get a fantastic education, but um, the campus culture, you know, the student life and things like that are going to be very, very different on every campus. So um, really try to focus on that and use your resources. As Alisane said before, reach out to your admissions counselor, utilize all of the virtual visit options that we all have on our websites right now, ask to speak to students on the campus, ask to speak to faculty on the campus if you can be connected, really use those resources and don't be shy. All right, I'm not seeing any more questions um, popping into the Q&A. Um, so students, thank you so much for joining us for our sessions this evening. Uh, just a couple of things I want to leave you with um, as you exit out of this uh, webinar, students. We do have a quick four-question survey uh, for you to answer. Please answer that. It helps us to create more programming in the future. Um, I'll always be looking for more sessions um, on this association's website uh, to check out other colleges that will be presenting. And if you'd like to check out the recording in the future, uh, go back to that same website where you registered for this event, and that recording will be there shortly. Uh, so thanks everyone for a great session and have a nice night. Bye everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.